How do you see people in your life? Think about it. How do you see people in your life? I'll ask that question again later in this video. Let's talk about the people in your life. Who are they? Do you care for them? When we care for someone, we suffer in some ways and make sacrifices. We do it with our children, for example. That's what Jesus did. He suffered and made an ultimate sacrifice for God's children. And in less than a total way, that is what Jesus asks us to do in a way to pay it forward. You see, caring for people is costly, but in a worthy way. Sacrifice is involved, but in a worthy way. Dave here with another video to share with you about the people in your life. When we care for people, it is a form of ministry because that is what we are to do according to the will of God. The way we care for people comes in many different ways and has many different meanings. When the Heavenly Father wanted to save his creation from sin, he could find no other way except the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, again, that's Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the scripture says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I just read to you Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, paid a dear hard price to obtain our salvation. Let's look for a moment at Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. Again, in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. And the scripture says, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering who knew what sickness was. And that's from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. If Jesus Christ is your model of ministry, you cannot avoid going to the cross for the sake of others. If Jesus Christ is not your model for ministry, then it's not ministry. You see, it's all about salvation. That's what we're talking about here. Salvation comes with a great price. And if we are going to take up our cross and follow Jesus, then we must be prepared to go with him to the place of suffering if that is what it takes to bring salvation to those around us. We have to think about that. We need to open our hearts to the Holy Spirit to understand that. If our goal is to bring others to Christ, we must be willing, as he was, to risk rejection. People may disappoint us, misunderstand our motives, even despise and persecute us. Understand that is part of the process that we must go through if we are to care for people in the way God has intended. Our Savior did not let suffering prevent him from being used by God to bring salvation to those he loved. Love for his Father provided all the motivation that was necessary. That's all it took. Let me ask you, are you called into some form of ministry? Let's talk about the concept of the fivefold ministry. That concept of the fivefold ministry comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Again, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, where it says, It was he, Jesus, who gave some to be, number one, apostles, and some to be, number two, prophets, and some to be, number three, evangelists, and some to be, number four, pastors, and number five, teachers. And that all comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. When the fivefold ministry gifts come together in unity, they bring great strength and dependence upon each other's gifts. A person's ministry determines who they work with or who they live with. The apostle, for example, works with leaders. He lives with leaders. That's what the apostle does. The prophet works with the revelations from God. The prophet is very much involved with the Holy Spirit. 
The evangelist works with the lost and brings them to salvation. The pastor works with the people. These are God's children. And the teacher lives and works with the word from God. It's more than just a study. So that's a little bit about the fivefold ministry. You see, we need each other. And God designed us to function this way, especially within the ministry in the church. And what about people already serving some form of ministry? Are you presently experiencing hardship because of the ministry to which God has called you? Have you begun to wonder if the price you are paying is too great? Take a moment to reflect on the price God was willing to pay in order to bring salvation to you. Are you glad he was willing to do what was necessary? Will you not join him in whatever it is necessary to bring salvation to those around you? I remind you of Colossians chapter 1, verse 24, where it says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for you, and I am completing in my flesh what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for his body, that is the church. And that's in Colossians chapter 1, verse 24. So, so now, so once again, I ask you the question that I started with. How do you see people in your life? My name is Dave from the Resurrection Center. Be blessed.